desk. And one of the things, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. One of the things I try to tell people that I first meet or that's been trading or just learning to trade is that, you know, look at the risk of the transaction before you worry about the reward. Uh, if you can control your risk, that's going to tell you if you're going to be able to win or lose. Risk is very important. So there's our headquarters here in Mobile, uh, 10,000 square feet. It's all about education inside that building. And we've been in business since 1996. And I'm proud of the fact that uh, we moved in that building in 2001. And it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey. And it's been a lot of fun to meet and uh, become part of a, a bigger community of traders. Uh, I know when I started, uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, people that would even tell you there were traders. And now it seems like it's, it's gone respectable here in 2013. A little bit about my background. Um, started many years ago. I've been trading the S&P since day one. Um, been trading uh, just about everything uh, else out there. And I will tell you, uh, before I get into my presentation, I use Nadex, and it's a great way to lay off risk in regular trading. It's a great platform, and Dan and his bunch is a wonderful bunch to work with. Uh, started school in 1996. Um, it was sort of by accident, and it's grown and been around a long time. Um, I don't know if you ever heard about our company, but it's a little small company here in southern Alabama, Mobile. Um, I have three books, three books, uh, three great uh, book from my standpoint because it's my life story uh, on my journey to become a trader. And part of that was uh, all the lessons you learn along the way. It was written by my cousin. She's a good writer, and she did a great job. Second book, Markets Never Sleeps, bring in the, the global market. We used a global market when we trade. And, of course, the last book is Trade to Win. All right, let's uh, a little bit about uh, how we do things at DTI. What we try to do... One of my biggest pet peeves is somebody to tell you, hey, you should have bought this stock or you should have bought this uh, future or, hey, I, you should have bought this option. So what we do at DTI is every Sunday night we lay out the next week. We lay out a plan, and then you see how the plan develops. You'll be a lot better trader. It helps eliminate a lot of the emotional problems that people have with trading. Uh, by following a plan. So we do that every Sunday night at 8 o'clock, uh, and, and I basically just lay out the way I'm going to approach uh, the week. So starting the month of July, uh, I don't know if you remember this or not, uh, the S&P was about 1,600, and I told our students, I said, folks, I think the S&P has turned bullish. I think we'll be going to 1,645 next week. and uh, that's where I see, see this uh, trend, and we were able to uh, take advantage of that in that first week. I also pointed out, uh, I've been long oil since June, uh, and that was when it was at 93. I said it was going to 110. And I also said there's some other ways you can play it. And then I said, let's buy Slumberjay. We bought some Slumberjay calls uh, at $1.68. Those calls were sold at about $10 during the month of July. And, of course, crude got up to 109 A way we started playing crude at the end was buying these 30-cent options on futures and uh, going for doubles and triples, and that was a lot of fun, too. Now, the heart of this presentation is about a trade I created called the Irrational Exuberance Trade. If you're trying to trade, you're trying to make money, and you're trying to have something that you can hang your hat on, I tell new people this is a trade that we developed that will help you do that. Uh, I demonstrate this publicly every Tuesday. I publicly go in and live trade in front of people because I want you to see it, but it's a great trade. In the first week of July, I traded Netflix, made about 30% on that 
particular place. Also that uh, week we hit the NASDAQ for about 40 NASDAQ points. Uh, so it was a, really a quiet week. Thursday that week, Amazon was at 292. Uh, we went long and sold it at 298. And then I got uh, long Google, took it up to 920. And I wasn't done with Google, as you see in the next slide. This is done every week at DTI. S&P uh, for the week of July 15th, my target was 1685. I thought we'd go up to 1685. We actually hit it about 86, 87. I think it maybe 92 that week. I can't remember. Uh, and I also said I'm going to be uh, trading a lot of corn in the month of uh, August. And I said, let's have a trial run. If it gets above 508, we day traded corn on that Tuesday, and it was good. My slumber jay position from the previous week, I added to it uh, that week because it started making its move, and I did another IR trade on Tuesday. And then I bought some Google options long term. I'm behind on those Google options right now, but I believe by the time they expire in October, they'll be paying me a lot of money. I bought the NASDAQ again that week. And then on that week, I said gold's going up, and I bought gold above 1302, and I did that crude oil option play. So it was really nice to be able to, to uh, you know, end the second week with some really nice moves in the market. The third week, I said gold is bullish. I thought it was the trade of the week. We should see 1345 in gold this week or that week. And I said, if corn gets above 511, I'll go long again. It did not happen. I did an IR trade on Tuesday. I think I broke even on that one. And then Google uh, was a buy if it got above 914. I still believe if Google goes above 914, it's a buy. And I'll be telling people that Sunday night. I was undecided on indexes this week. I didn't, I, I didn't really have a good feeling about the stock indexes. Did not trade a lot of indexes that week. And I did say that if Amazon got above 311, I'd buy some long-term options on it. I said the best bet of the week was gold, and it sure was. As gold rose and went to 1345. Okay, last week I said I think gold's going to take out the 1345, go to 1362. It looked like I was going to be right again, and then gold had a downturn, washed a lot of people out. I'm still bullish on gold. It's just going to take me longer to get to 1362. I think uh, I think it had a good close on Friday, and I'm looking for higher prices next week. I'm still looking for Amazon above 311, Google above 914. You ought to write that down. That'll make you some money if you see those events occur. I'll buy corn if it gets above 511. I'm undecided on crude right now. Uh, maybe another week. Uh, uh, pulling back and you know uh, consolidating. Uh, I was bur uh, I was real bullish on Tuesday on the indexes. I was also bullish on Friday on the indexes. And we have. Uh, I said, look look at bonds. If they break 133.13, I would go short. And I'm long Hershey and been long Hershey and staying long Hershey. December corn, James. December corn. Now, been around a long time. I can't tell you where the market's going to be in, in, in September. I can't tell you where it's going to be in October. But I can tell you this. On Sunday night through next week, I can tell you what I think, and I can tell you how to use it and teach you how to make some money. And that's the key. So I keep it a week at a time, one week at a time. I look at it one week at a time. And, uh, and I think you'll do a lot better. After 30 years, I, you know, I used a lot of things to tell me long-term opinions, short-term opinions. But if you can break it down over a course of a week, and, you, and, and your goal is to be profitable at the end of the week, I think that's the best way to go. You don't have to sit in front of a computer, and you can look for those opportunistic trades that will make you money. All right, my approach. Here's the way it works. Sunday night at 8 o'clock, I, uh, I lay out seven highlighted trades for the week, and I do that to teach our students. 
I use the seasonals. Anybody ever use seasonals? You got to use seasonals. There's certain things that happen. Uh, somebody asked me why I bought Hershey uh, because that's one of my seasonal trades I do every January through May. I said, well, I got to thinking about it. You know, the banks right now are paying what zero percent. I said, why not invest in Hershey in this uptrend? And if we can stay long all the way to January, we'll buy more of it from January to next May. I do think it's going to 110. I, think it, I don't remember where it closed Friday. I think it's around 97, if I had to guess. But the seasonals are very, people back in June, look for the grains in August. There will be good trading markets in August. I said, look for gold to be strong, August 26 and further. And I said, if you, if you, if you, do this and lay it out, you can see these markets, they follow a pattern that you can uh, sort of latch into. The trade of the summer was crude. It was when it was at 93. That's when I said, hey, I'm getting long and that's what I'm looking for. Late summer's grains. I look at news. I look at, uh, we just had a Fed meeting on Wednesday. We had a unemployment uh, number on Friday. The market came out of both those meetings with the bull still intact. Tells you they're going to be higher highs, okay? So you got to plan on that. If you own stocks, you got to plan on, on higher highs. And then, you, of course, you got to put your own schedule over when you can participate. That's why I asked a question at the very beginning, who would be available Tuesday? And this is what I look at. It's, uh, in, it's uh, what I look for is the star days. In other words, if you see the red stars, those are market. Those are market moving events. You got to pay attention. Barron's tells new traders, old traders, where the action is every week. That's where I go to get it. Now here's the probability chart I take out of the Trader's Almanac. I don't know any of you uh, have the Trader's Almanac, but I would tell you to get it and you ought to look at these numbers. Notice that I told you last week I was very bullish on Tuesday. You remember that? Well, I knew that on Sunday night that I was looking for the setup to come in on Tuesday, and it came right on schedule, and we were able to kill the markets on Tuesday, and it was a great trade. Uh, again, this lays out every week. I'll look at next week, Sunday night, and I'll take where we're at right now enter in, and show people how to connect the dots from what the probabilities. That's a 21-year history that we're using here to sort of give us our foundation. Uh, and I heard y'all doing some talk about high frequency uh, computers trading and all that. Something like 84% of all trading is done that way. The fun trades are like a Friday when you have a negative day overall and it breaks, okay? And it breaks and it gets everybody caught short on Friday. I was long the NASDAQ and I was playing golf Friday afternoon. And it's fun to watch the shorts get their, their faces filled on a Friday afternoon. How do I know it's fun to watch it? Because I was long. And I've been on the other side. It's not a very fun Friday afternoon to have your face peeled and have to wait to Monday. You know it and I know it. So using this data, let's use this data and then intersect it with what we know the action is. And then you know, it's pretty common sense from there. I don't believe in sitting in front of a computer. I trade uh, short term. I trade swing. I trade long term. But the, you know, the one thing I don't believe in is you got to sit in front of a screen. If you're sitting more than an hour in front of a computer in a 24-hour period, you probably don't know the key times to be there. Number one, and number two, you're probably pretty new. The good traders that I've met are there when they're paying. Know those times. Having the tools. Now, we have the tools at DTI to minimize the time spent. We call it Roadmap. It's the Roadmap 2013 software. It's what I use. The tools that I use are, are based on the software tracking all the key ingredients of the market. 
then it puts it all together and the cake is baked and that's the way it works it's pretty simple some of the tools that we use but it's the way we organize the data we have our statistics I have the seven sisters which uh, look at uh, e-mini the Dow the NASDAQ and this is something a lot of traders don't look at and I think they're fools for not looking at it is the DAX I don't know if anybody here ever trades the DAX but I will tell you the DAX is very very important to the US trends gold bonds and crude of course my five IR stocks Google Amazon Netflix now I've replaced Visa with Tesla and Apple and then other markets here's some key features the custom page is set up where the openings in the first column and the net openings in the third column the opening price is the biggest eye-opening event I had years ago when I've tried everybody everybody focuses on the close right I focus on the opening the opening tells you who's winning the race just ask yourself a common sense question you know how are you doing this year well you look at where your account opened this year and where you're at right right now there's the ETR page it tracks the market 24 hours while you're sleeping it picks out trends of markets you can see right over here where GCQ had turned green back there at 1279 and you can see you can see it was leading higher back then the compasses our charts are special and the reason our charts are special we have uh, the noise area and then of course we have the metrics of each market notice that each market has its average true range which allows you to get the personality of the market you're trading and then of course you have key metrics five day high five day low where did it open the month at where did it open the week at these are key things that set up your trade and then of course you're buying sell places it tells you when you're wrong now this is a, uh, a quite a unique indicator this is the horse race what I do if I'm trading the uh, the stocks that I'm talking about I will put it into the horse race and it's a simple process of seeing who is leading and who is who is trailing if they're green and it's higher like if I look at this one right here you can see that Amazon is the strongest of those those stocks you see apples the weakest so depending on the direction that's uh, part two of the IR trade that's what would set it up all right let's talk about options how many of you trade options I love options I used to tell people I never met an option I wouldn't sell but there's another side of selling options it's buying options I call it the defined risk approach to options so I'm gonna cover this real briefly just give you an idea what are options options are rights and obligations created off a underlying index stock or your and they're called derivatives okay so strategy table if I buy a stock let's say that I thought uh, Amazon was going higher I could buy the stock or I could sell puts which is a little bit longer term strategy or I could buy calls now let's say I gave you the following scenario scenario let's said that let's say that I thought Google was going higher Google was going higher what would you do would you buy the stock or what would you do you'd buy the calls right for a defined risk trade on Google that's the way it works simple options here's some terminology you might uh, want to learn a call options when it goes up a put options when it's going down if you're buying the strike price that's where we make a deal at okay I like at the money options especially for for long options which is the buying side I like at the money if I'm selling options I want to be out of the money the expiration date okay the expiration date is when the contract ends when the obligations over that's important if you're day trading options not everything about options just sort of give you an overview where you'll understand what's up next the irrational exuberance trade great name because that's what it is 
what we're doing is taking advantage of the chaos created at 8.30 to 9 central time in the morning. 8.30 to 9 central time in the morning. So we take our software, which is, gives us an advantage to digest the data. We jump in and jump out for most people who know we're there. Okay, It's a very quick trade, a rational exuberance trade. Hey, Adam Mallory. He's one of our guys headed in Chicago. Our goal is to make money doing this strategy using simple option strategies. And so the rational exuberance trade is a simple option strategy based upon the first 30 minutes of the U.S. cash open. To do it, you got to have the tools. That's the roadmap. The knowledge, which is what we're going to give you with the horses, and then you're picking, looking at the compass and following our plan. Now let's talk about the roadmap, the education. and picking our horses. Notice I like stocks that are going to move over a hundred dollars and I use Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and Tesla. I haven't made a trade on Tesla. I just substituted in about two weeks. I've been watching Tesla for about two weeks now and we're probably you know we're getting close to making our first trade on Tesla. But here's the way it goes. So let me test you and see if we're ready to go for the next part. Looking at the horse race here, what stock would you go long? What stock would you go short? And if you did go long, how would you do it? Absolutely. Apple long, you'd buy calls, and you'd buy puts on Tesla. Absolutely. That's what it would be telling. You'd know that information within two minutes after the market opened. Advantage of time. All right. Now, last week on Tuesday on my public trade, I did an Apple IR trade. I did it by going, well, you, you tell me what I did. You think I went long or short Apple last Tuesday? Absolutely. I went long. I had a class of about 30-something people there, and we did this trade live, and we made about 30% on this particular play in about 15 minutes. And I was talking about if I did a trade, I would probably do Tesla short on that day. So we pick our horse. We determine our entry. I, and, and I think in terms of two, so you can go two, four, six, eight, ten with the strategy. But using a two lot, okay, that's two options, we ought to look at what's your exposure, where's your targets are, and how much you should lose if you're wrong, okay? Notice we've got all the elements of setting up our plan. What options will I use? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I use this week's options. Thursday and Friday, I use next week's options. This is something unique to the IR strategy, okay? So if I'm doing a trade on this Tuesday, which options would I use? Exactly. And then options. Options have different prices, so we're going to make that part easy for you, too, because I'm going to tell you the exact price that you ought to be paying for the one that you're going to use way before next Tuesday. We're going to pick our horse. We won't know that the next Tuesday, but we're going to know the option price we're going to pay. Our plan is, assuming it's around $5, to sell the first unit at $1, the second unit at $2. Now, let's think about that. If you buy two options at $5, what's your total exposure with this strategy? Thousand bucks, right. Now, let's do some math here. If, if I make $3, how much money will I make?
300. And what's 300 over 1,000? You say, I got it? Lori, you're right on top of it. Absolutely. Now, one thing that people have trouble with options is knowing where to set stops, right? Okay, so I'm going to teach you this, but, but here's the good thing about it. I've been trading options for 30 years at this. So I'm going to tell you what will work and what won't work in this particular strategy. And here's what works. If I go buy a $5 option, I'm going to use a stop of $3.40. So how much would I lose on two options if I'm totally wrong using that strategy? Paying five, stopping myself out at three forty. Three hundred and twenty bucks. Absolutely. So before we go into the next part, let's do a little test. If we flip flipped a coin, if we flipped a coin and we were half right and half wrong, five right, five wrong. We're basically at break even, correct? After 10 trades. So, our job at DTI is to teach you how to be better than break even. Okay? That's the math on it right there to get you 30% return. Let's look at accuracy versus risk. Now, I've been doing this trade. And I've done about 103 of these uh, IR trades. I have lost about 21 times. My accuracy is about 80%. So 80% accurately would tell me, just to go back to that equation, if we lose 300 twice, we've lost 600 bucks, correct? So if we make 300 eight times, that's 2,400 bucks. Minus 600 would be 1,800 every 10 trades. Have I got your attention yet? Are you starting there putting this on paper? Are you thinking about it? Is this something you could do if you learn how to do it? Absolutely, it's something you can do. And here's more math on and how you get the calculations and, and all that. But that's pretty much I covered that, okay? So how do you learn this trade? Well, you need knowledge. You know, we're going to train you. We're going to do it face-to-face -face. in Mobile, Alabama. We're going to face-to-face train you. We're going to give you a look at this trade every Tuesday where you know how and what we're doing, where you can follow along as we do it. We're going to give you the tools, which is our software. We're going to teach you how to use that. That takes some time. It's not something you're going to get right away, but you're going to be able to start on it right away. And we're going to practice, practice, and practice. The only way I ever got good is practicing, practicing, practicing. And we're going to practice this together every Tuesday. So what's next? You tune in and trade with me, right? And your only decision at 9 o'clock in the morning is whether you want to go play golf, go to the beach. And I noticed I, Adam put a little fisherman up here. And... I guess that's hiking. I wouldn't want to do that. I'm sure like that number one. Anyway, that would be the biggest decision you got to do. Okay, how can you learn this? Remember the poll I asked you in the very beginning, and I said, who would be available next Tuesday? Okay. We call this the old school class, by the way, and the next one's in December. But there's two steps for you to see it. Fill out this roadmap link. That's number one. Takes you about five minutes. I want to know who I'm working with. That's number one. And number two, join me on Sunday night at 8 o'clock and let me lay out next week for you in my TWT planning session. And then we'll watch the live, and then you can watch the IR trade on Tuesday. Now, if you can't make either event and you fill out step one and step two, here's what we'll do. We'll send you a recording of what I said and, of course, of how.
I trade it on Tuesday. That's what we'll do. Any questions about that? Simple, straightforward. All, all, this, all I'm going to do is get in your head. When you see this trade, you're going to love it. Now, if you fill out the roadmap profile, audio copy of my plus or or my very first book, we'll additionally send you last week's IR trade on Apple, where you can watch it. Everybody understand? what they're getting if they do this. Now, if you don't want to wait to Sunday night, you don't want to wait to Sunday night, and I really got in your head about the money at gmail.com, put when I can call you, Give me the you know the time to call you. If you don't, if you can't, you know, if you can't wait, and you really want to get involved, I can get you involved over the weekend. But the bottom line is, if you send me an email, give me a phone number, I will call you and tell you the details about the old school class and all that. Okay. So, Morgan, that's all I got. Oh. Susan, DTI stands for Diversified Trading Institute. Diversified Trading Institute. You can go to our website, www.dtitrader.com. Diversified Trading Institute. I had to name it that because... Uh, the issues were there. Uh, Angie, and just go to our website. I don't want to talk money today. All I want to talk about today is getting you to think about a trade. Guess what? It'll work on any market out there, no matter where you live. All you got to learn is the technique. It's a great trade. With our software, you can analyze it, interpret it, and execute it. And you don't have to sit in front of the stupid computer all day long trying to eke out a, a living. Do the math that I gave you. Those are the numbers. It's unbelievable. It's a great trade. Everybody have a good weekend. Morgan, thank you very much. And if you're in Chicago, drop by the Omni Hotel. I'm in Chicago Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with a, a, a bunch of, uh, of our students. And you get to... Yeah, just send me an email if you want to, if you want me to call and talk to you about it. I don't mind. Remember, two dates that I gave you. August 26th is when gold should get really strong. So if you never hear of me again, never think about it, write that date down, August 26th. All right, great. Thank you, Tom. We uh, greatly appreciate you being here and being a part of today's event. Hopefully that um, you guys enjoyed, uh, enjoyed today's session. We appreciate you being here. And uh, we will get a copy of all the recordings posted for you on our website uh, by hopefully Monday afternoon. So again, it takes us a little while to get the recordings posted. But uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to be here and be with us today. Uh, we've got a recap. I know um, earlier today we we had a lot of um, different people uh, present, but uh, we've got a copy of the sessions at this link. I'll put it here. A lot of the specials that were offered. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. If you uh, didn't enjoy it, I apologize for that. But again, I would try to do the best we can. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something from today's presentation. So uh, we have lots of good content on our website. You're welcome to check out. You can check out a recap of all the offers at the following link. And for you trivia winners, I think I heard from everybody from all the trivia winners. I believe I did. 
so you guys should be uh, good to go. But thanks again, guys. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you on the flip side.